Right. Okay, Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. Um, thank you for joining our uh, CME today. So, um, we have um, Prof. Caritas, Dr. Dr. Uh, Raven Azman Ali. I think um, I don't need so much of introduction of him because if I were to read his CV, I don't think so I will be able to finish it until tomorrow. But just a brief one, he graduated from Monash University when I was at maybe at the age of few years old. Yeah, and he obtained FRCP from Royal College of Physicians in the year of 2001 and also Masters of Medicine. So he was a former Deputy Dean in HUKM one of the um, very active personnel in uh, starting the stroke network in Malaysia. And uh, recently he was uh, uh, awarded as a Prof Emeritus. Uh, just for information, I think you know it as well. This uh, um, uh, award does not go to everyone. Yeah? Uh, so uh, that's how uh, significant his contribution is. And um, today his topic will be about fits, faints and funny turns. Again, I can't help myself from emphasizing that this is my third time of listening to the same lecture, but I still look forward to it. That's how enjoyable it is. So today, without further ado, I would like to invite Prof. Raymond to uh, proceed with his lecture. And I hope that we will have a lot of discussion and uh, burning questions to come later on. Um, Prof, uh, the floor is all yours. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. Thank you, Dr. Naswina. Um, Every time you listen, I will try to improve <laughs> and make a bit more changes yeah, uh, to the talk. Otherwise, boring. Uh, uh, stroke is one thing that we started in HUKM, and I was the, the first chairman of that program in 2009. But before that, yeah, uh, just for your information, uh, the, uh, Dr. Nasrina and the rest of you, uh, I also started the epilepsy surgery program in the whole country. That was in earlier 1997. We did the first epilepsy surgery. I were, I'm not a surgeon, but I encouraged my surgeon to do this, and he re re relies on me to plan the surgery. It's, it is us neurologists that tells the surgeon where to operate because we have seen uh, people doing uh, making mistakes and operating on the wrong area. You know, uh, it's really uh, betul lah, doing the wrong uh, operation. So this is not good. Uh, just to let you know, so that was 1997. I don't know whether Dr. Nasrina was born yet. But uh, we will uh, uh, we'll see how we go. Yeah? So today is not on epilepsy alone, but because uh, a lot of you are from emergency department and in general medicine and so on, uh, you may see things that look like fits or seizures, but they are not. And things that do not look like seizures, and they are. Okay, so vice versa. So I'm going to show you some examples and uh, we'll go through this, the phenomena and how to define it. In neurology, yeah, before I go on, Neurology definitions are very important, like vertigo, bellismus, tremor. You got the wrong definition, you got the wrong diagnosis. Yeah. So I will let, let's go through yeah, by one by one. Oops. Kenapa tak boleh move yeah? Let me just answer kejap. Uh, something wrong with my ah. Jangan jangan stop. Can share. can no problem. Kejap, what, what's happening? Tunggu lama sangat kot. Ah, <laughs> uh, itulah. Eh. Uh, Ah, ada, ada, gerak dah. Okay, okay, great, great. We can see that. Thank you. You see, yeah. So, fits, faints, and funny turns. Kan? At one time, I was going to give this lecture in Bahasa Malaysia to the public. Nak fikir macam mana nak translate funny turns tau. Uh, fits, dia orang panggil sawan lah, orang awam. Eh? And then, um, faints, we call it pengsan. So, I come up with this word, eh? pusing kelakar, eh? funny turns. So, we're going to, which is not the right thing lah. But I thought that was very difficult to translate. Anybody who knows how to translate, maybe can type in the chat box. Okay, so what are faints? Yeah, faints, yeah, uh, or blackouts. Eh? So the other word, syn synonym for faints, uh, on Bahasa um, Melayu will say, uh, yeah? it can be a sudden momentary loss of vision. Uh, they will call it pain, juga. Yeah, you, you believe it or not, a blackout uh, of, of consciousness. Loss of consciousness, momentary, yeah, or loss of memory, yeah. So all these things can be synonymous. And when you take a history of pengsan or blackout, you must be careful what uh, they mean by that. Some of them may not fall, yeah, and still call faints. So it, in faints, yeah, like like anything that you lose consciousness awareness, you must get a history from a witness, yeah, and the witness should be a reliable eyewitness, not just 
orang dengar tau you you peng, uh, jatuh and then they come and see you that's too late yeah it should be a reliable eyewitness saw the event from the beginning to the end that would be a reliable eyewitness if you can and then it's difficult to make diagnosis but at least you can give what happened afterwards the the so called post ictal behavior so that's very important it is a it is a diagnosis based on history eeg will not diagnose it a scan will not diagnose it and of course blood test will not diagnose it yeah uh, in the majority of cases so in the absence of focal neurological signs when someone uh, faints the common cause actually is cardiac i'm going to prove this to you yeah it is not neuro jangan refer neuro yeah kalau tak sure uh, it is actually cardiac cause in, in origin so uh, how common are blackouts or faints <coughs> somebody has to show the mic i think okay, anyway 50% of the population yeah all, all of us here 50% of us will have had a blackout at some point in our lives and remember blackouts may not just be uh, rebah and momentary loss of consciousness if you all recall back eh, maybe you all have had a blackout but as a, as you age yeah the older you uh, are the more likely you're going to have frequent blackouts so if you're above 80 years old 45% of people above 80 might have recurrent blackouts the first bullet to lain one blackout maybe in some point in your life 50% but above 80 likely to have recurrent blackouts and most of this will be cardiovascular some will be uh, cerebrovascular yeah but and uh, but some will just be pingsan lah uh, be, uh, you know simple things it accounts for about 6% of emergency medical admissions and unfortunately 40% of blackouts have no known cause because uh, no eyewitness uh, no uh, all the tests have been normal but i can bet you most of these are actually vasovagal attacks yeah? most of this so if you again if you don't believe this there's a, a paper published in the journal heart not a neuro journal even What's the that? the commonest is it, let's see yeah so epilepsy only accounts for about 8% of uh, all cases yeah so it's, it is not common and unknown uh, is a small percentage but again this is an old paper but the majority yeah 55% is due to some cardiovascular problem and the most common among them is a vasovagal attack or vasovagal faint. Yeah. So uh, these are the causes of blackouts that I don't want you to copy. I don't want. I don't think it's important to remember. I will cover some of them uh, in greater detail. Uh, but you can see it's cardiac, neurological, metabolic, psychological as well. Yeah. So these are some of the causes of people uh, having a blackout, so-called in general terms, as a generic terminology. So simple faint. Yeah. What orang Melayu panggil pengsan biasa, yeah. But I tell the patient can pengsan luar biasa lah, but it is not biasa, yeah. So if anyone faints, we have to uh, take a history and and uh, uh, find out actually why they they fainted, yeah. So vasovagal attacks, the first one I'm going to cover. It's very common. I'm sure you'll see it in emergency department a lot, and then they get referred to a neuro clinic. But the diagnosis is quite easy. People talk about seizures, yeah. So in 100% of patients, there is always an identifiable precipitating factor, such as getting up quickly yeah, from a squatting position, especially squatting, a prolonged standing. Yeah, uh, This is very common. It is very common among uh, the armed forces, either police or uh, the soldiers. They have to march, and then suddenly they have to uh, stand at attention, listening to this boring talk by the general. And a lot of them in a the hot sun will faint. Yeah, and this also happened in HUKM uh, when I was a young lecturer. The pengara was someone else at that time. I told the pengara I noticed that a lot of nurses were fainting in the perhimpunan bulanan uh, of the hospital. They uh, kata biasa lah. <laughs> they might fall and fracture something or you no, know, the skull have a laceration and so on this is not good this is not good pengarah i said to the pengarah i said you have an auditorium that can fit 200 uh, almost 300 people why don't you get them sitting you know oh biasa kami buat semua uh, orang berdiri apa no you can change the mindset we have people you know even in schools now uh, even my children dulu kan uh, they now can uh, bersila dengar perhimpunan and it's covered now there's no hot sun Askar polis lain, I told the pengarah, askar polis sanggup mati untuk negara. Nurses sanggup mati, tak adalah. You want to have zero body count at the end of the uh, perhimpunan. So what we did was tukar lah, tukar ke uh, auditorium, zero pengsan. Yeah. 
So from that time onwards, yeah, I don't know whether you all know this, but from that time, maybe in 19, or maybe two, early 2000, sampailah sekarang, all the perhimpunan bulanan di HUKM duduk di auditorium. Tak ada orang pengsan. Said, Baik, I, I skip some of these factors and uh, lacerations. Hot and stuffy weather. That sort of covers the standing, prolonged standing as well. But if you're in a hot and stuffy weather or stuffy uh, environment, uh, crowded rooms, crowded areas, like, like a concert, yeah? And this is common. We see a lot in neuro clinic sent by the emergency department, uh, query seizures. But when you take a history, this young 15 or 16 year old girl went to a concert, rock concert, Awi ke Mawi, sorak sorak, got excited in the hot and stuffy environment, crowded people, pengsan. Lepas pengsan, they had a few jerks that mimicked a seizure, you know, and I said, baik tak bagi anti-seizure drug. So they were sent to us just from the history alone. I just have a pat on the back. I told the, uh, I will tell the parents that this is what happened. Uh, no need treatment, no need ECG, no need EEG. Balik rumah. Uh, that's what we do. Memang tak, if it recurs, you come and see me again. Don't need to worry. Yeah? Because it is a clear precipitating factor. Uh, painful stimuli. This is very true of the lucky especially. And especially from the armed forces. Tunjuk needle je macam vaksin lah. You tengok video dia kan. Nampak needle je dah pengsan. Uh, this is uh, so belum sampai the painful stimuli. So that's the next one, frightening scene. Menakutkan ya. Tapi ambil darah ramai yang pengsan. Unpleasant scenes uh, like after an a car accident, you you drive drive by the car or motorcyclist, uh, the helmet came out, kepala putus misalnya. Uh, some of you may vomit, a few not vomit and may faint. Yeah? So this is quite common. So there's always a precipitating factor. Take a good history you will know. Sometimes there is this warning. It's not an aura. It's a warning. Uh, you, you feel lightheaded. Nausea, I've mentioned. Uh, sometimes vomiting as well. And ringing the ears, that's like a buzzing sound. Uh, and vision going black. So, orang Melayu will say, uh, mata gelap. Tiba-tiba, macam blackout, doctor. Uh, macam ada national blackout. Uh, TNB tak ada power supply. So, that's what they tell me. And well, when they pengsan, yeah, usually they are pale. Sometimes flushing, but more common is pallor rather than cyanosis. Cyanosis is at seizure. It cannot be uh, vasovagal attack if it's cyanosis. Yeah? It's going to be something else, like a seizure, epileptic seizure. Incontinence of urine or feces can occur. Yeah? So, and tongue biting. So tongue biting incontinence is not pathognomonic of an epileptic seizure, please. Including myoclonic jerks, it is not pathognomonic of an epileptic seizure. Automatism, yeah, I'll show that uh, in greater detail later on in the talk. Uh, this is automatic behavior. The patient is not aware what they're doing, and I'll show you some examples of that. Just to illustrate this, I'll show you. I, I'm sure some of you have seen this video like umpteen times, but I like to show this to illustrate to you that uh, vasovagal seizures, or oh, sorry, vasovagal attacks, uh, what uh, can have convulsive movements like an epileptic seizure. So sometimes we call this convulsive syncope, right? So vasovagal attacks we call it syncope. Uh, but if they have convulsions, it's called convulsive syncope. So these are five medical students from Germany. They were paid some money, yeah? volunteer, but they paid some money, walaupun volunteer, to do an experiment where they had to squat yeah, Chang Kong for one minute, doing Valsalva maneuver while doing that. It's not easy. Dah. Cuba you buat. Uh, memang susah. Jangan buatlah kat rumah. So these are done. This is, of course, um, uh, one of the lecturer's professors. Uh, stand by, yeah. You know, other, other defibrillator, other, you know, IV atropine and so on. So this is uh, done in control conditions. So these five German medical students did that experiment uh, uh, with the Valsalva maneuver, and you see the phenomenon that happens. All of them will have a um, vasovagal attack, but look at the variations in uh, what they do, yeah. So this is the first one. This person falls out stretched superficially, as in tonic seizures. So that's just. And Trust. again, in this faint, a similar type of outstretched fall, compounded by subsequent twitching movements. These can be so prominent as to mimic a generalized clonic seizure and are often reported as such by surprised or frightened observers. Although laboratory recordings demonstrate that the jerks are not in fact associated with cortical discharges. Other movements may be asymmetric, as this man stretches out his right arm and turns his head to the right with myoclonic jerks, which could be misinterpreted as a frontal lobe seizure. Or complex, 
as in this subject who ruffles his hair and looks perplexed, so this, mimicking a temporal yeah. lobe type of automatism. So, so this young man, uh, while of, others vote, combs his hair, and that's called automatism, yeah? So automatisms may occur even in a uh, uh, vasovagal attack, yeah? So, so what's the difference? In none of these patients, yeah, uh, did they have any post-ictal uh, abnormal behavior. They were not unconscious for a long time. They didn't sleep. They didn't become confused. They were immediately responsive afterwards, yeah? So this is the main difference. They may have, uh, they may have incontinence. They may bite the tongue. It doesn't mean anything, doesn't point to uh, epileptic seizures. So uh, the other thing, yeah, uh, that can mimic epileptic seizures or cause a tonic seizure, and I've seen this real myself in my own eyes, is VT, yeah, ventricular tachycardia. I just tell you this because it's important for uh, emergency specialists and uh, doctors. Uh, you, you all know Tosa de Poix, yeah? Tosa de Poix is a type of um, VT which is quite dangerous. So this, there was a patient in Ward 23 HKL. At that time, I was, um, I can't remember, registrar or young specialist at that time. Um, my MO called me. Uh, that MO now, by the way, is a cardiologist and also a politician. I think you can work that out. And uh, he called me, uh, he's, he was junior to me. So he called me, uh, uh, doc, Dr. Raven, this uh, that time, sorry, Dr. Biasa lah. Uh, marhai, na marhai in that time. So doctor, come and see this. Our uh, patient has status epileptic. Why? Why? Uh, recurrent seizures, doctor. Uh, very long. So I said, okay, hang on, hang on. I'm going to come. I, I was just nearby another ward. So I came along and I saw this patient having a tonic seizure. Yeah? That like the first case is now tonic. It means keras, such as stiffening of all four limbs, unaware, uh, uh, eyes open, like a tonic seizure. And then she she recovered within oh uh, maybe about twenty seconds. And then she spoke to me, hi prof, hi Dr Raymond. And I said okay hi. I said this because status, ni. you know status by right it should be more than five minutes or having two or more seizures, convulsive seizures in between which there's no recovery of consciousness. So I said, never mind. Uh, then she had another one. No? So I can see that these are called serial seizures. Serial seizures should be managed like uh, a status epileptic. Never mind. So I said, um, what are you going to give? I'm going to, uh, the MOC, I'm going to give IV phenytoin. I said, why don't you have the cardiac monitor on? Don't you monitor the heart uh, rhythm giving phenytoin? Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot blood too. So I so he put the leads on. We did, uh, we put the monitor on, right? And Lo and behold, before he injected the phenytoin, she had another seizure. But just before the seizure, she had Tosa Dipon. Phenytoin tak masuk lagi ni. I showed the MO, what is this? Dipon scratching his head. Oh, oh lah. So I said, these are tonic seizures due to, due to brain anoxia during Tosa Dipon. If you had given IV phenytoin, you would have made the ventricular arrhythmia worse. So kita tukar lah ubat. Turunkan the chamber, normal saline containing the phenytoin, tukar ke amiodarone. She got cured. No more tosadipon, no more seizures. I That's a lesson that I also learned. Um, number one, never give IV phenytoin or never treat status epilepticus without an ECG monitor. Now it's standard. Yeah? You do give a, a put on an ECG monitor with someone in someone with status epilepticus. Dia dah diagnose, tapi tak buat betul. Nasib baik, tak pergi mahkamah. And I said, by uh, yeah, they did all that, then became politician. Bula. So, this is dangerous. Yeah, sorry, long story, but I thought that's interesting for you to know. Another one that can cause uh, um, seizure, well, convulsive movements and a syncope is like this. Yeah, these are episodes of uh, SA pause, pause or asystole, short asystole. So, when we do EEG, yeah, we do EEG for 30 minutes. We have a longer rhythm strip. You all look at the bottom, yeah? EKG is written there, right at the last channel. We do EKGs or ECGs in 100% of our uh, patients on EEG, uh, uh, when we investigate with EEG. We have a longer rhythm strip than the cardiologist. Cardiologist bought 12 ECG, you go to the clinic and for checkup, patient comes and uh, bought ECG dulu boleh It's 10 seconds, habis, all the channels came out and tunjuk by the uh, prof scan scan uh, or doctor scan scan, datuk scan scan. Uh, ni, ni, oh, normal lah, Pak Cik. Tak ada apa pun. Uh, because they don't have a rhythm strip like us. Yeah, thirty minutes of rhythm. So we detect. I've detected uh, wanky bark phenomenon. Yeah, um, like this atrial fibrillation, SA pauses, 
earlier than the cardiologist. So that is wajib for us. We teach our neuro trainees that you must interpret the ECG as well as the cardiologist. So this is the book, it's from our book. Yeah, I wrote with Dr. Yao Gekbi. She is a neurologist in Penang, she is an epileptologist like me. So this book, actually she wrote most of it. I just uh, proofread and also gave some examples of EEGs. Yeah? So this is a good example of uh, a cardiac uh, arrhythmia causing uh, epileptic uh, seizures. Yeah? Uh, sorry, not causing, causing seizures. I'll come back to the definition uh, in, a, in a moment. So there are other causes yeah, of uh, syncope. You all know, I won't go through this. This is, uh, you all know better than me probably. Yeah, uh, so we won't go through that. Yeah. Okay, let's go to fits, convulsions and seizures. Yeah. So we, remember, we're going to cover fits, faints and funny turns. Yeah. So I covered faints first because it's easiest to uh, get, uh, to do away with. Now let's go to seizures. Yeah. So these terms are all uh, different. Yeah. Well, let, let me go back to them. Fits, yeah, fits is a lay person's term. We, kalau boleh, we don't write that in the medical notes, yeah, fits. Or when you give a lecture, you only give public lectures or you talk to patients, they might say fits, yeah. It's very generic. So it's similar to seizures. Seizures is the medical term, which actually is from the Greek word seize, which is an attack. Uh, fits is the, is the lay person's term. Convulsions is totally different, yeah. Convulsions are seizures or fits that have convulsive movements. So an absence seizure, just a blank stare, you cannot say convulsion, man. You got to say a seizure, yeah. So better use the word seizure. You're not sure whether they're convulsive or non-convulsive. Use seizure, yeah. And sebutan is seizure, yeah. So many of uh, my my MOs sebut apa seizure. Actually, it's huruf C, seizure. So seizure. Okay. Uh, the first thing to show you are these pseudo seizures. Yeah? Nowadays, we call it non-epileptic seizures, NES, atau PNES, psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. The word psychogenic itu tak payah. Jadi sebab epileptic seizures yang betul-betul epilepsi itu, or sometimes are psychogenic too. Right? They're emotional, they get attacked. Memang can happen. So we just say NES pun cukup. Uh, depan patient, we say that these are non-epileptic seizures. When we talk with colleagues, yeah, uh, pseudo seizures is fine. We don't want to let patients dengar the word pseudo seizures. Patients will know. Oh, doctor ingat aku tipu eh. Sebab the word pseudo kan? So kita jangan guna depan patient. Um, the first, I want to tell you all how to differentiate between epileptic seizures and uh, non-epileptic seizures. Yeah? So epileptic seizures are seizures from epilepsy, yeah? whereas non-epileptic seizures are made up usually. So they can be either conversion disorder, where they don't know they make it up. Yeah? So this from a psychological problem converts to a somatic or physical problem. Oh, it can be malingering. Malingering tu saya panggil apa? Mengada-ngaitis. Mengada-ngada-ngaitis. Dia memang mengada-ngada je. Nak, nak cari pasal. So those are malingerers. Yeah? Uh, and the, I, I give you three examples. One of them malingerer and two are conversion disorders. Uh, all three um, have to manage in the same way. Uh, cuma the malingerer tu, they will not follow your instruction to see a psychiatrist lah. Sebab dia tahu dia buat-buat. Betul-betul dia buat-buat. Yeah? So the first thing, the first bullet tells you that it is not stereotype. It depends on an audience. If there's no audience, buat apa buat kan? Buang masa je aku buat seizure ni. Hmm, tak ada orang pun tapi aku ni semua. Sumpah, sumpah, tak, ada, tak, ada, tak ada siapa nak tengok. So dia tak buat. Memang tak buat. And the importance and relevance of the audience. Kalau mak bapak dia tengok, they will just pengsan, lembik sekejap, maybe keras, that's it. Kalau houseman datang, ada jerks. Kalau Prof Raymond datang, they will be more theatrical. They will be flailing their arms around, you know, thrashing about. And this happens also in Ward 23 when I was there in HKL. Masa tu UKM was attached to HKL. Memang macam tu. Yeah? When the nurse say, ah, prof coming, prof coming. Or the nurse pun kata, tak pernah tengok sisi kat Ward macam ni pun. Uh, macam lain sikit ni. So the, we dah tahu dah, can make diagnosis based just on that. Yeah? These attacks rarely occur in sleep. And you can see this, uh, when you see a patient in emergency department, you can ask also, no? The first one never occurs. No, no audience never occurs. In sleep, rarely occurs. It can occur kalau they have a sleep partner. Husband, wife, brother, sister, you know, and so on. What they do is they scream first or they will uh, uh, let their arm fling over the face of the husband or wife so they will wake up, right? So after they wake up, they have the convulsions. Lah, yeah? So this is uh, typical of uh, uh, nocturnal attack, but rarely rare. Sebab dia pun nak tidur, kan? 
takkan nak jaga siang malam kan so dia nak tidur so, siang lagi orang kata apa berbaloi more audience and then the sequence of events often build up slowly and waxes and wanes ya yeah? uh, build up slowly means they they want you to see the ev evolution of the you know of the attack uh, convulsions with wax and wind meaning sometimes ada sometimes dia macam kurang sikit atau disappear sebab apa dia penat dia penat in real seizures tak ada penat tak kenal penat ya yeah? the brain will be exhausted of glucose and uh, oxygen sampai get status and they can die you know from a convulsive seizure okay uh, let's let's look at this uh, pelvic thrusting is common but head rolling yeah head rolling is a uh, I would dare say that head rolling ya yeah, macam ni ya yeah, saying no is a pathognomonic diagnostic of pseudo seizure if you see that it never happens in epileptic seizures let's look at the first patient oh kurangkan ni lah I use the volume because dia tak bising dia tengok ada kamera buka tidak ya yeah, nampak eh, dia then he will jerk like this using the pelvis mainly dan di, dipermudahkan oleh spring katil spring yang lama dekat HKL ni HKL Neuro Lab ya yeah? and he's i think he's like enjoying himself he will bite his tongue purposely air leo keluar darah keluar kadang-kadang sengaja gigit tau no? berani dia and sengaja kencing so my amos will give him IV diazepam and then kata prof tu ada post ictal coma prof apa tu sleep i kata kau kasi diazepam buat apa you give normal saline ah dia tak tidur lah lepas tu okay so if you're not sure you can give that first okay this is the first example this is a younger girl you see head rolling bukan bukan aku bukan seizure aku bukan epilepsi ni doktor ni kau semua bodoh lah ha tu nampak so, this is what they do kalau you see macam tu it is never 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 a epileptic seizure ha, bukan 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 doktor okay so easy to remember ya Um, and then the leg will jerk the left hand will jerk sekejap lagi ya yeah. ah, yeah. coming up the left so right leg left leg my embo kata apa uh, pe, prof this patient ada multifocal seizure kenapa oh ada satu fokus dekat ke kepala dia satu dekat tangan kiri satu dekat kaki kanan uh, bukanlah this are all pseudo seizure okey itu conversion the first patient malingerer second is uh, conversion look at this uh, middle age lady This is infrared camera because tengah malam ni tengah tidur uh, in sleep not sleep sorry we, we darken the room as to sleep uh, you see her jerking ya yeah? like this and now, no 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 bukan bukan doktor bukan tolong aku aku bukan seizure sebenarnya so what happened this lady actually every night her husband becomes drunk a lorry driver and will uh, will what do you call it uh, wake her at night you know beat her up Okay, and she gets upset. So then, so this is called waxes and wanes. They jerk, 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 penat kan, penat. They berhenti kejap, rehat, aku nak rehat je. Ah, tu jerk lagi. All these things may look funny to you, but jangan gelak depan patient lah kan. Ah, so these things, are, uh, so what we do kan, we will play back the video to the patient and the husband now. And we'll ask the husband, are these the same attacks at home? The patient pun nak tengok. Kan? So the patient will look at this. And the husband said, yeah, exactly the same. If the attacks in the lab, recorded in the lab, are identical to the attacks at home, we call the recorded attacks habitual attacks. If they are not the same, we call it non-habitual attacks. Non-habitual attacks are more dangerous, meaning maybe in the lab too, pseudo seizure. Dekat rumah tu betul ya. Because you look at the bullet yang last kali, 30% of patients with epilepsy have additional pseudo seizures. So you must be careful. Every time, if you all, you know, when when you all become uh, specialists and you're specialists now, you refer to neuro. Make sure that whatever they recorded in the lab are the habitual attacks. Yeah? Ask your neurologist whether they are habitual or not. Ah, uh, the fourth bullet, yeah, chronic movements like rhythmicity. If you look at that uh, last lady, that middle-aged lady, there's no rhythmicity. The rhythm is like this: when the jerk start, the amplitude is small, but you fast, rapid. When it progresses, yeah, amplitude becomes bigger. But the jerking is slower. That's the pattern. So amplitude increases and frequency reduces as the seizure progresses. Okay, and they have little or no postictal phenomenon, provided you have not given any benzodiazepine IV ke whatever lah rectally ke jangan nak bagi atau sekarang kita bagi uh, buckle my dazzle lamp pun boleh kan? 
So we, we don't do that uh, if, you're, if you're sure that this is a pseudo seizure. This is another one I saw in Queen Elizabeth Hospital, Kota Kinabalu. I, I, did, I used to do visiting neurologists. It's about KKM, tak cukup neurologists. So we universities will help them. Yeah? So this is we give this stroboscopic light. When we tell the patient, kan, kalau saya bagi lampu macam ni, mungkin awak ada seizure. Ha, dia buatlah suggestion. Kan? So dia ada jerking kepala dia. No, no, bukan. This is diagnostic. I told the doctors there, I think you have to withdraw the anti-seizure drug slowly. Yeah, don't do it rapidly. Yeah? Because patient will know that you don't care about them. I just say that these attacks are not due to epilepsy. And then we ask them, uh, is it possible that you know you could have uh, been under any stress? That's how we do it. We, we have to believe them. That, tell them that these attacks are real. And then we will refer to you to a psychologist. A psychologist, actually, psychiatrist. Yeah? And then they get uh, uh, managed, uh, combined management or joint management between neurologists and the psychiatrists. OK, you can see that she's in distress. Uh, jangan dah bagi. So we didn't give any drugs, yeah. Uh, but she is uh, having uh, a pseudo seizure there, right? So these attacks uh, have a female preponderance. Uh, usually, com commences in adolescence. Uh, secondary gain may, may not be obvious initially, yeah. But if you take a history, usually they may have a sexual abuse in childhood by the father, uncle, and so on. Uh, may coexist with true epileptic seizures, as I mentioned earlier, and when you take a psychiatric history yeah, or you follow them up, they will have, in most cases, yeah, an overt psychiatric illness, such as anxiety or depression, most common. Yeah? Uh, so this is uh, quite typical of uh, these attacks. By the way, yeah, all these conversion disorders are getting less common in developed countries. Yeah? So in Australia, England is like almost tak, tak jumpa. So Malaysia, much like expert lagi lah, we all, uh, dalam uh, pseudo, uh, these pseudo seizures because it's still quite common here. Neuro has the most conversion disorders, yeah, compared to cardio or respi or any other specialty. They will have headaches, the most difficult headache, pseudo headache, ni, because we can't see. Uh, pseudo blindness, I've seen. Pseudo wrist drop, I've seen. So hemiparesis, paraparesis, semua common lah, yeah. So these are common things. And hemiparesis, mimic stroke. Pernah patient dapat RTPA, uh, stroke reversal with thrombolysis pun ada. At last, they balik, uh, sebelum this, this size, you kata, Dr. Semani, saya pura-pura je. Saya tak, this can happen. Uh, be careful. Okay, so, uh, so the seizures, yeah, what we do is, dulu kan, we used to do, send blood for serum prolactin level. Yeah? That's the old teaching when I was a medical student pun. Uh, if you see a convulsive seizure, or what we call, um, sekarang we call it a focal impact awareness seizure. Last time, we call it complex partial seizure. Those two seizure types, you boleh hantar, uh, serum prolactin within 20 minutes of the end of the attack and you send to the lab if the prolactin is raised it's a true epileptic seizure if it's normal it is not uh, that was the gold standard at that time but now tak payah ya kita what i call the motivated video eg or video, uh, eg video recording uh, we we tell properly that why we want to do uh, the um, uh, recording uh, tell them that because doctors sendiri kena tengok ya our your attack description daripada witness semua saya tak dapat gambaran lagi so we, we encourage, we got to encourage that indirectly, tell them that we want to see the attack. And tell them that the attack will occur during this time, eh? hyperventilation, we do that uh, three minutes of hyperventilation and photic mission, stroboscopic light for about uh, five minutes, you might get an attack, check out lah, you might get an attack. And don't worry, doctors semua ada, ada yeah? so technician eh, encourages an attack prior to the girl. Encourage mean, uh, I put in inverted commas, be careful, yeah? because kalau kita encourage betul-betul, <laughs> it's unethical. Just say that, um, uh, kami uh, bersedia lah kalau-kalau ada attack, uh, ada doktor dekat saja, saya, uh, dia memang sebelah saja kat klinik ini, uh, uh, then we can treat you straight away. And I, in our experience, 90% and more of patients with pseudo seizures will have an attack. Sebab ada attention kan, so they will do that. And the video camera is pointed out to the patient. Ini camera ya, so kami akan rakam melalui kamera macam ni. Macam itulah. Yep. Uh, okay, that I mentioned that earlier, the attending doctor should try to be present. Yeah? Jangan uh, pergi sebok, pergi minum teh ke apa. Uh, try to be present at the recording. Uh, so I don't want to talk about that. Okay, let's talk about... So, Ken, I've spoken to you about uh, vasovagal attacks. I've spoken to you about epileptic... Uh, sorry, non-epileptic seizure. So, what the hell is an epileptic seizure? Yeah? So, Prof, macam-macam ni tak apa seizure ni. So, this is the definition that I like. Yeah? Uh, it's quite long, but there's a shorter one, but I think this it encas encapsulates what it really means. Yeah? So an epileptic seizure, number one, is intermittent. So an, an intermittent, or you can use the word paroxysmal, it comes and goes. It's not continuous. It's not progressive. 
stereotype. I highlighted this because I mentioned earlier that if it's stereotype, you must suspect it is a true epileptic seizure. Why? Because every time it comes, it comes from the same focus. Takkan berlain-lain kan? So when it comes from the same focus, in 99.9% of cases, this, the pattern of the attack should be the same. How it starts, how it progresses, how it ends. Right? And it's an intermittent stereotype disturbance of, you can summarize all the other words that follow with the word cerebral function that on clinical grounds results from cortical electrical neuronal discharge. Yeah? Because consciousness, behavior, emotion, motor function, perception, or sensory function are all brain function. So kalau dalam exam lah, you nak jawab kan? So you say intermittent stereotype disturbance of brain or cerebral function. Cerebral function, which on clinical grounds results from uh, cortical neuronal discharge. And that's the definition of uh, epileptic seizure. So the keywords uh, comes and goes, it's stereotype, and it's a uh, disturbance of function, and it's due to electrical discharges from the brain. It's synchronized, yeah? uh, but all that's not necessary for the definition. So what is epilepsy? Epilepsy is yeah? Epilepsy is the disease. Seizures are the symptoms of that disease. Another example, yeah? coronary artery disease is the disease. The symptoms are angina. So if you see some of the angina, you don't say, ah, you have IHD, tak, belum lagi. You know, because you have to make sure that the chest pain too, betul -betul is due to coronary artery disease. So Tara. angina Tara. is diagnosed Tara. clinically. CAD, coronary artery disease, is diagnosed by angiogram or CT nowadays or MRI. So that's what we do. Epilepsy, like, so epilepsy is the disease, the condition, the overall condition. The seizures are the symptoms of that. So you need at least two unprovoked, don't worry about reflex, that's less common, yeah? Seizures occurring more than 24 hours apart. Last time, I'm sure you have seen this earlier, last time there's no 24 hours now. So you, what, Prof, this 24 hours, they plug from the sky ke bukan? Dia bukan macam TIA. TIA 24 hours tu, they plug from the sky. Betul-betul plug from the sky. It's a committee of so-called experts in stroke, yeah? Tapi we know now, TIAs last usually minutes, seconds to minutes saja. So 24 hours akan tukar tak lama lagi TIA definition. But this one, based on research. There's a big study done in the US by Alan Hauser yeah, at L. What he did was he studied like hundreds of thousands of patients with seizures. If they had seizures, many seizures, doesn't matter, yeah, even 20 seizures in one day, confined to one day, the chances of getting future epilepsy is like zero. But if you had one attack today, one attack saja, yeah, and previously you had one attack one month ago, that is higher. Walaupun jauh-jauh, tapi, and, and jarang-jarang, it's more likely. Yeah, maybe the reason because that day can something happen. There's some event in, in your brain, some metabolic thing or something happened. So we, we, we don't uh, treat patients that way. So two, at least two unprovoked seizures occurring more than 24 hours apart. I hope you remember that. That's, that's the only one I think that you all need to remember. Because the rest two is more you need a neurologist or an epileptologist like, like us. Can. <clears throat> the second one can, one attack cukup, unprovoked. Tetapi the probability which according to experts of further seizures is similar to the general recurrence risk of 60% after two unprovoked seizures. Yes. And it's only one attack, but the risk calculated is the same as that number one. Yeah, over 10 years. I'll give you an example. A patient came with one attack, yeah? GTCS, came to emergency department, brought in by the ambulance, and there was a witness that followed. And the history is typical. Uh, you ask the patient when he, when he um, recovers consciousness, no attacks previously. So you all did a scan because he's only 60 years old. And uh, you found an old infarct quite big yeah, uh, in the silent area, katakan frontal lobe, yang not very, uh, uh, you know, no, no, not much function there. When you see that, I can bet you that's the, that's the cause of the seizures. So when there's a lesion in the brain, usually it's an old infarct or a scar, you have to assume that this is going to be a recurrent uh, will recur, yeah? Takkanlah kita macam bodoh kan? Uh, itu old stroke, tak ada apa ni. Uh, Pakcik, Prof. Lehman kata makan lepas second. Pakcik tunggulah. Uh, that cannot happen, yeah? Because you've done the scan, you found that, yeah? I got no time to about, talk about when scans are indicated. Maybe a different session, yeah? Uh, later on. The third one is diagnosis of an epilepsy syndrome. Example, the absence epilepsy, yeah? A six-year-old child comes to the clinic, and the mother tells that uh, my his teacher has been telling me that he's been daydreaming at school. So I, I, get, I get him to hyperventilate in front of me, hyperventilate, yeah? and he has a blank stare, a typical absence seizure. Absence seizures fits the diagnosis of 
absence epilepsy, we call it CAE, childhood absence epilepsy, you have to treat from day one the, the, the first attack. Though. It will occur, will, sorry, it will recur. And absence seizures, kalau you tak pandang patient, you will know, kan? Patient may have 100 times a day, dia pun tak tahu. Dia tak tahu. Ya, cikgu pun cakap daydreaming. Okay, so uh, absence is one example. Another one is micronic seizures, micronic jerks. Yeah? Early in the morning, tengah bergosok gigi, pegang cawan kopi, terplanting, yeah? jerks. Yeah? This is very high risk of recurrence. We have to treat after one attack. Jangan tunggu sampai uh, second, third attack. That is not clever. Yeah? This is how we classify seizures. I'm not going to go through this in any detail, but basically you can divide yeah? focal onset, generalized onset, and unknown onset because there's no unknown. Eh? is what we call a, a placeholder until final classification is determined because the patient was asleep or no uh, no uh, witness at that time or witness missed the whole attack. Yeah? So we put it unknown first. Kalau uh, Prof. Raymond the record dalam lab, we can reclassify into focal or generalized. So unknown is temporary saja. Um, and generalized and so can be motor or non-motor. Focal, we divide first whether it's aware or impaired awareness. Aware too, that's time we call it simple partial seizure. And impaired awareness is um, that's what we call complex partial seizure. So now it's called focal impaired awareness seizure. I know it's longer, but it's the truth, yeah? Last time when we call it partial seizure, it is actually, a, I don't like the terminology, and also the International League Against Epilepsy realize that when you say partial to patient, patient may think, oh, saya punya seizure ni separuh jalan ya, Prof. Um, saya punya kawan tu complete. So saya punya partial ya. Uh, so they they think that it's, it's less severe, okay, number one. Number two, guys, when you say, a complex and simple, uh, simple or complex partial. Uh, patients to complain kan, uh, kawan saya simple, aku ni complex, susah ke nak rawat? Not necessarily kan? So they, that's why it's difficult. Focal is correct because it comes from a focus and you be, you be honest, yeah? you are aware or impaired awareness. When you see a seizure kan, when you, I just want to advise you when you write in the notes, when you see a seizure, patient is, kata mata buka tapi doesn't respond to you, don't write unaware, yeah? you write unresponsive. Because on don't write unconscious, you don't know yet. Patient unresponsive is the correct terminology. Bila patient dah recover semua, tanya kan. Uh, adik ingat tak apa berlaku tadi? Oh, langsung tak ingat. Tak. So, it's unaware. So, then you can write, uh, patient was unresponsive during the attack and was unaware of the seizure uh, afterwards. You know, We, in our mind, neurologists would say that there's unconsciousness. Yeah? But we don't have to write that because we are describing. So, when you describe, you describe it exactly what you did, saw and um, um, you know, observe, yeah? So this is uh, more important than writing unconscious. You don't write conscious level here. We wrote only awareness and impact awareness. Oops. Kenapa tak boleh pula lagi sekali ni? Yeah. Okay, I have to get this down. Um, this is the expanded version. Lagilah susah nak ingat. Saya rasa tak payah. Uh, you can, this is our uh, latest uh, International League Against Epilepsy 2017 classification of seizure types. And uh, it's available in our MSN website, the Malaysian Society of Neurosciences. You can download the whole uh, uh, thing there yeah? in, in, uh, in our guidelines. Our CPG is basically from the Epilepsy Council, for which I'm, I'm the chairman yeah? for the Malaysian Epilepsy Council. Okay, I'm going to talk about some seizure types, uh, not too much because of time. Yeah? But let's talk about the most common that you see uh, in emergency department and also in drama series, television, movies, and because it's the most dramatic and the most noticeable. The rest, the uh, uh, witness may say, uh, pengsan biasa, you know, termenung. That's why we want to show you tonic-clonic uh, first, yeah? So what happens to tonic-clonic? You all should know, right? Because orang awam pun tahu. Uh, there's loss of consciousness first because the discharge goes generalized, yeah? And then the eyes will roll up, yeah? Because you're going to have this bells phenomenon, you're going to fall down soon. So they will fall and often with injury, unlike pseudo seizures, yeah? there's no planning here. They cannot plan. So the off injury is very common in a generalized tonic-clonic seizure. Then they enter the tonic phase, which will last maximum 30 seconds. Yeah? But a lot of witnesses will overestimate. They kata 3 minutes, lah. 10 minutes pun ada orang cakap. Tapi 10 minutes, selalunya dah sinus. Yeah? So in the tonic phase, what happens is that all muscles will contract. And all muscles, all muscles. So diaphragm, intercostal muscles, muscles of respiration, abdominal muscles will push air out from the lungs. But as they go out, they will go through a contracted, uh, because muscle contract, contracted larynx. So when the larynx is sempit, there's a sound, and that sound is called an epileptic cry. 
So that's the mechanism of this cry. Hmm, macam a serigala lah. Yeah, that's the sound. So that one is typical of a, uh, the tonic phase of a GTCS. And respiration will cease. Yeah? If it's long enough, you'll be sinus. Then they enter a chronic phase, which is uh, maximum, yeah, 30, 60 seconds saja, not too long. So the entire jerking, the stiffness jerking phase is about one and a half minutes, yeah, maybe two minutes. So as I mentioned earlier, there's jerking that when which the amplitude increases and frequency slows down as the seizure progresses. And during this phase, there may there may be, it may not be tongue biting, incontinence, cyanosis rather than pallor and sometimes autonomic features, sweating, and so on, not so common. There's a prolonged post phase, unlike pseudo seizures or syncope. They will sleep because the brain is exhausted of uh, oxygen and glucose. You will sleep, if not coma, you know? And then headache yeah, is common. Muscle aches, of course, and sometimes the creatinine kinase, the CKMM, yeah, will go up because of the continued jerking of the muscle. So this is an example of the tonic phase first, yeah? Not quite typical GTCS, but this can be looked like this, yeah? So there's a few seconds. Then sekejap lagi, yeah? Respiration has stopped. The narrator was my supervisor, yeah? Professor David Fish in Queen Square, London. Uh, so he's, I, I, he gave me this video lah to use, yeah? Chronic phase, yeah? So it's a bit, yeah. So this goes a bit longer. Okay, so it's a typical, so postically is confused, doesn't know what's happening yet. Okay, I will stop there. So you all should know this. Now, because I've covered that one, the psychogenic non epileptic seizures, PNES, as well as convulsive syncope, let's try to differentiate the three. In terms of duration, yeah, the psychogenic ones will make it as long as possible, as long as they're not tired, and as long as you pay attention, they will have the, the attack. Convulsive syncope, of course, very brief. They put less than 30 seconds, but can be split seconds. Again, yeah? The tonic tonic seizures, as I mentioned, up to two minutes, can be as brief as 30 seconds, right? So the, the duration varies in all this. Trigger, yeah? You need an audience for psychogenic seizures. And you need, uh, there must be a precipitating factor for convulsive syncope, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, tonic tonic seizures sometimes, example, period, you know, a period. We call it catamenial seizures if they if, uh, uh, coincide with the period or just before the period. Um, uh, emotional stress, yeah, I've mentioned earlier, lack of sleep. So these are triggers of uh, tonic-clonic seizures. And aura is can happen in tonic-clonic seizures if it starts focal, if it's generalized from the beginning, yeah? it is rare, actually, doesn't really happen in psychogenic, but they make, may make up one. They can do it, so that's a lying skit. Uh, and in convulsive syncope, it's not aura, it's a warning, yeah? lightheadedness and so on, it's warnings. We don't call it aura. Uh, eyes during the event, so tonic consciousness almost always open, psychogenic almost always close, and syncope open or close. Jerking, tonic consciousness, I showed the pattern earlier, but psychogenic, as I said earlier, irregular, it's non rhythmic. Waxes and wanes, but penat, and it's not stereotype, but bezer, equal audience, yeah. And in convulsive syncope, often present, yeah, maybe tonic, maybe chronic, and as I showed, maybe automatisms and so on. Head rolling, as I mentioned earlier, diagnostic for psychogenic non apathetic seizures, not for the others. It doesn't happen in tonic chronic seizures. It is diagnostic, pattern pneumonia. Occurs in sleep, I've mentioned rare in uh, psychogenic non apathetic seizures. Uh, and often, yeah, in tonic chronic seizures, it happens a lot because sleep essentially is a is an aggravating factor for epilepsy. Yeah? We do a sleep EEG, we get more likely to get epileptic spikes in the EEG. And of course, it doesn't happen in convulsive syncope. You have to be standing, sitting, or walking. Standing is the most usual one. But color lying down, tak ada syncope. Yeah? Injury, very rare in psychogenic seizures. Rare to none, yeah? but patients may self-injure themselves, but not, not serious one. Yeah? Yeah, tonic chronic seizures, as I said, sampai fracture, ada, yeah? that will happen. And convulsive syncope, of course, sometimes depends where they fall. Yeah, they have very brief warnings, kejap, yeah, but they may fall into a drain. Yeah, so this is uh, important. That's why I told the nurses to sit down in the assembly. Yeah, vocalization, uh, epileptic cry, I mentioned in the tonic one seizures, psychogenic, usually no. Uh, and um, sorry, the uh, convulsive syncope, rare, but vocalization, tonic one seizures, if it's from the frontal lobe, they may vocalize. Yeah, 
uh, I, I think I'll show you an example. Pelvic movements, classic, yeah? But it's not diagnostic of psychogenic seizures because it can also occur in tonic tonic seizures, although rare. Incontinence, I've mentioned that it can occur in convulsive syncope and tonic tonic seizures sometimes, yeah? Which is common, yeah? Uh, but it is uh, can occur. Psychogenic seizures, generally no, yeah? unless that malingerer tu lah sengaja kencing. Um, daily attacks, uh, of course, syncope no lah kan? Takkan nak pingsan setiap hari. And then psychogenic sometimes, yeah? But tonic tonic seizures, of course. I've seen patients 50 times a day pun ada. Yeah, tonic tonic seizures. Crying during attack often. This almost is diagnostic in a psychogenic seizure. Dah habis je, je nangis. Yeah? Uh, nampak sangat, they want attention. Yeah? And then post drowsiness, of course, no in the last two years, but tonic tonic seizures can be prolonged. Okay, those, that is the, macam the, 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 the comparison of this three. Yeah? This is another seizure type that I want you all to see. Uh, and Nasrina, kalau I'm over time, you let me know, yeah? Uh, actually, okay je, Prof. <laughs> you started a bit late, kan? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this girl is six years old. Uh, she's hyperventilating by blowing through a paper, through a paper fan. And you'll see in a, in a few seconds, she will have a blank stare. Yeah. And the eyelid will be flickering like this. Yeah? A blank yeah, stare, please. flickering. Yeah. Then my supervisor said, can you remember the word happy? Happy. She tak ingat lah. That during that time, she won't remember the word given to her. She's unaware. So in a absence seizure like this, the sudden lapse of consciousness, there's a blank stare only usually, and eyelid flickering is usually only the motor manifestation. There's no jerking. Yeah. There's no automatisms. And the posture is maintained. They don't fall. Yeah. I get referred cases from all over Malaysia. Query, absence, tapi ada history jatuh. No, it's not. They don't fall. And activated by hyperventilation, as is this girl, the stroboscopic light or intermittent photic stimulation, we call it IPS, or hypoglycemia. Yeah? If you do an EEG <clears throat> before lunch, yeah, when they're hungry, it's better. Uh, they get more, more yield from the EEG. And they have a characteristic EEG, which we will know. Lah, yeah? uh, so in the, in the classification, that's where it falls. It's a generalized onset, non-motor seizure, what we call a typical absence seizure. I want to show you this one that you all have to know. Yeah, this uh, I draw it up from another lecture. Yeah, but uh, this was a 28 year old unemployed right handed man. Uh, he was described as having strange behavior attacks yeah, starting on the age of 15. And by the time we saw him, he was having like two or three times per month. He was on three anti seizure drugs. And when you ask him uh, up what happens before it, uh, you know you have the attack, said the angin and perut. He then after that he loses awareness. So we have asked the witness becomes unresponsive, you have chewing movements of the mouth, his right fist will be clenched, and he gestures with the left hand. That's it, no tonic-clonic seizures. So we we'll last up to seven minutes, and then dazed and confused after the attack. Semua orang ingat dia psychiatric, hantarlah ke hospital bahagia tanjung rambutan. So one clever uncle who was an engineer said, takkanlah anak sedara aku bodoh ni, ataupun gila. So they bought Jumpa Prof Raymond for second opinion. And this is what we recorded in the lab. You look at this attack, yeah? So we have EEG electrodes on. This again, in, uh, sometime in the morning, early morning, 2 a.m. And he has this attack. Just look carefully. The, by the way, the right hand is off the uh, camera. You cannot see, uh, but it's already stiff from the beginning. From here, it's stiff already. Okay. Okay, the left hand is coming up now. You can see gesturing with his left hand. We call it gestural automatisms. It's twinkle, twinkle, little star. Can you see that? Okay. So right hand are stiff. In a minute, it will come up. Yeah, soon it will come up. And then the his blank stare. He's looking around, but it's blank. Yeah. Uh, right hand coming up soon. You can see it's clenched in the fist. It's stiff. We call it dystonic posturing. Yeah, dystonic posturing of the right hand. He's looking around. He's coughing. There's lip smacking. Kalau you look closely, and comes back. The face comes back to us. He's smacking his lips. He will swallow. He will chew. Chewing movements. Okay. Yeah, more automatisms of the left hand. Yeah, some people say twinkle, twinkle. I say that, but some people say much like, weird, yeah, bro. And then the right hand will do the same thing, you know, later on. But that's later. The first is the left hand. Legs are moving just now. He's inspecting his fingers. These are all automatic behavior, automat automatism. Yeah. Sekejap lagi, he will, he will fiddle with the bed sheet. We call it fiddling with the bed clothes. Is another feature of this seizure type. You see. 
Ah, usik-usik baju, kadang usik nektai, usik uh, seluar, usik bed sheet sebab dia ada bed sheet. Kalau ada uh, kalau dekat meja saya dekat klinik, dia akan susun buku-buku atas stetoskop saya. Dia dia collect manual automatism. Apa-apa yang dekat mereka, they will do something with it, ya. Yeah? They but they are not aware. They not aware of this. Tapi kan kalau this the only attack you see, 90% of you will say ni orang gila ni. Ya, yeah? because it doesn't have the typical tonic clonic seizure. And nobody would have thought that this is an epileptic seizure. Semua ingat orang gila. Kesian dia. So what he has is a focal impact awareness seizures. So in the classification, we say focal impact awareness automatism seizures. You know? Because it started with automatisms. But don't worry. For you all, just say focal impact awareness seizures. So we did an MRI. Because to me, that was typical uh, focal impact awareness seizure. So you look at the top right panel. It's a T2-weighted coronal image of the brain. Um, my ad, sorry, can I just go out just to show you because my arrow doesn't work without me. If you see my arrow, eh, I'm showing the uh, his left hippocampus here is smaller compared to the right. Hippocampus, by the way, means seahorse, kuda laut. So this is the post-mortem, a different patient need kuda laut. You can see that it's normal. On this side, this is the top left panel. And this side is pale and smaller. So MRI balik ke kanan sini. This is normal size. This is smaller. Yeah. So this is called hippocampal sclerosis on the left. And if you remove it, this hippocampus is actually this side is normal. It's from different patients. Yeah. It's like what we call a Swiss roll. Yeah. Ini tengah-tengah jam cleaning the cake tu lah. Sini Swiss roll dia jam dah kurang. Dekat sini kita panggil devoid of neurons. So this is typical of hippocampal sclerosis. So what we did was we remove this hippocampus. Uh, that this is not the first patient though. I think this may be number 15 or something. So far, HUCAM kita dah buat 180 cases eh? and we have overtaken Singapore. Singapore pun dah nak minta cases daripada Johor Bahru sebab dah jealous dah kan. So uh, after UKM, tak silap lah. I think USM first, yeah, a second and then UM and then HKL. Uh, HKL is very active now with Dr. Suganti then. Uh, she's got the latest technology lah in terms of uh, surgery. Um, so this is hippocampus sclerosis, and I want you to know this because it's the commonest cause of focal impaired awareness seizures. Last time we call it complex partial seizures. What happens in these attacks? Eh? So these attacks, because of the hippocampus it comes on temporal lobe and it comes on mesial area. So we call it mesial temporal lobe epilepsy. Mesial means medial and inferior. Infro medial means mesial. Same thing. So you can say infro medial. Yeah? There, there are four A's. You think I highlight the A, capital A, aura, absence, automatism, amnesia. Senang nak ingat. The first thing you get, typical aura. Now the aura actually is a seizure dah. Aura is a focal aware seizure. Why focal aware? Because they boleh ingat kan? Aware. And last time we call it simple partial seizure. So this man has what we call a rising epigastric sensation. Actually it's like going down roller coaster. When you go down roller coaster, kita rasa macam perut kita dah tertinggal ke atas. And that's the sensation they get. Sometimes get special sensory like smell, olfactory hallucination, psychic phenomenon like deja vu or autonomic phenomenon, not so common. Now, these are the common auras of mesial temporal epilepsy, the commonest cause of focal impact awareness seizures. After the aura, then they enter the focal impact awareness seizure. Some now uh, before cause complex partial seizure, you all know as that. They, what happens in a complex partial seizure is they get absence first, but, which means blank stare. What they are doing or speaking, they will stop. So motor or speech arrest. And in this man, like shown in the video, his contralateral arm, remember the hippocampus closure on the left, his right arm became dystonic, right? Mainly his hand, but the arm was stiff. And then he had oral elementary automata, the chewing, the swallowing, the lip smacking. Or motor, yeah? Motor, sometimes they walk around the room. Buka baju, naked, walk around. Manual, and then antara hospital bagi lagi. And then manual is like susun buku, kemas katil, gestural, twinkle, twinkle, little star, showing good sign, bad sign, yeah, or dirty signs. Um, and then uh, post-sectal confusion, gradual recovery. Uh, sometimes they will rub the nose with the ipsilateral hand, not so common, and they will have amnesia to the event. So 4A. Senang nak ingat kan? So tak apa. Kalau you nak make screenshot, I hope you have taken that. But uh, I'm sure you remember this, yeah? Uh, this is uh, I, I want to this, but let's let's look at the attack, lah. Yeah? This is a 20 year old girl, a college student, uh, that uh, saw me uh, for third fourth opinion. The, the, the people don't know what this was. Um, she has had this attack since the age of 8 tahun, yeah? 
12 years of this attacks every night selama 8 ta- jaja 12 tahun from the age of 8 sampai 20 so 12 tahun of these attacks and uh, given four anti seizure drugs no help right uh, and these are the attacks we recorded one attack or the several attacks but i show you one example they all stereotype the same and this is what happened yeah malam Okay, that's about 30 seconds of the attack. She's better now. That's her sister. She knows where she is. She's got no postnatal confusion. She's not uh, sleepy. She's sleepy because it's two a.m. One, she sleep back, but not because of the seizure. Um, she knows what happens because she knows get it every night, but she doesn't know what exactly uh, transpired, right? So this attack actually, I also thought they much are mengigau, don't. Kita bangkit ber night terrors, but because it's that kind of kita mengigau every night for 12 years. And also because it's stereotype, I said mm, uh, we have to investigate further. So what we did was the MRI done at 1.5 Tesla was normal. So I repeated this at three Tesla. Yeah, as you know, the more powerful the magnet is, the clearer the lesion. I've seen a 17 Tesla MRI, 17 Tesla, the Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. The mana we can see synapses of the neurons with vesicles that kita belajar kat and apa ni masa kita belajar anatomy histology lu electron microscopy kan. But we can see the MRI now, you know. Uh, but we don't do humans because the human cannot tolerate 17 Tesla. The brain will be cooked. Yeah, uh, the heat is too strong. So what we did was this MRI. If you look at the top right panel, if you can see this uh, white, I just show you again. Eh? Uh, this my arrow. Can you see this? So you can see this number two here, like number two twenty something lah. Uh, this thing here is abnormal. Yeah, I showed the radiologist. They said that this artifact, prof. This this biasa. I said no. This is exactly what we want to see. And it's just here. So I told the surgeon, the same surgeon that helped me with the first case uh, in this in this um, uh, video, uh, and she said, "Yeah, sure, we let's move." And we, sure enough, when we removed, we saw this histology on the left. It's called focal cortical dysplasia. And from that day onwards, sampai sekarang dia umur empat puluh tiga tahun, zero attacks. We have cured her of the uh, epileptic seizures. Yeah. So these are some. So these are frontal lobe seizures. Yeah. Very brief attacks, commonly nocturnal. Minimal post-data confusion, much I'm there. Prominent motor manifestation, much I'm there. And in fact, hers is hyperkinetic, yeah, much I'm mengigau, much I'm gila lah. And vocalizing, she's screaming. Uh, they have violent or bizarre gestural automatisms. She was kicking at the moment, but some people by cycling, yeah, tengah baring, they cycle, much I'm cycling or stepping or circling. Circling means they have to get up, duduk, punggung dekat uh, static, tapi dia kaki gerak macam ketam. Ada uh, circling around clockwise or anticlockwise. And then uh, often misdiagnosed pseudo seizures. That's why they enter the psychiatrist. Uh, so sometimes eh, in in uh, publication in Lancet last time they call it pseudo pseudo seizures. So but the doctor thought pseudo seizures, but they are full. So actually two kali pseudo jadi real seizure lah. Yeah. All right. Ah, uh, ni kan ini pun kita ingat macam frontal seizure. Tengok, eh? Tapi ni siang. This one I uh, one doctor showed me this. Uh, sorry, a neurologist in Kuching. Yeah. Uh, SGH Sarawak General Hospital showed me this video. Uh, let me put this up. She has got vocalization. They all, they thought it's frontal lobe seizures. She's unaware. Menakutkan kan? Ah, uh, it's stereotype. Every time attack like that. Tapi I told the doctor it's not pseudo seizure lah, because uh, you know it is stereotype number one yeah, and it's not frontal lobe seizures because ini siang tak pernah berlaku malam terbalik pula. So this is my diagnosis. I just show you. I'll just stop this lah. Nanti you pun pening kepala tengok ni. This is called tardive stereotypy. If you believe it or not, tardive stereotypy. I just ask one question. Tardive you all know kan? Tardive means Is due to psycho, apa, uh, psychotic, antipsychotic drugs. So I ask, is she on any antidepressant? Ah, uh-uh, ah, betul. She's taking uh, any clozapine and so on. So these are uh, involuntary, coordinated, pattern, repetitive, rhythmic, purposeless, but seemingly purposeful or ritualistic movement. I think the word ritualistic describes her very well. Macam a ritual, kan? 
or utterances, what she says. Uh, due to neuroleptics, I've mentioned before, and they have all these typical repetitive oral facial lingual movement, blah, 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 blah. I think you all don't need to know so much. Tak sure better refer to Prof. Raymond or some uh, epileptologist. Uh, patients wrongly given um, anticonvulsant, anti-seizure drugs, bukan, yeah? what you need to do actually is to change the antipsychotic. Uh, if cannot, then you have to reduce the dose. Yeah, She's much better now because they cannot reduce, what they did reduce is she became uh, depressed and suicidal pula. So we had to reduce the dose saja, yeah? Okay, saya, saya ada banyak lagi apa Nasrina, tapi I think I'll stop here because dah satu, hampir satu jam lah. Uh, okay, maybe we can have some discussion and questions first. Alamak. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, yes, Prof. Uh, I will thank you. Sharing, yeah? Uh. yeah, thank you so much for your lecture. I I would love for you to uh, move on with your lecture. Tapi saya takut orang lain pula yang macam tak boleh nak absorb kan. Yeah, I've always enjoyed all, all your uh, uh, videos, especially because um, I think neuro ni dia something yang you have to look at certain things for you to memorize it, kan Prof? Alright, so um, I would like to welcome if there is any questions for those who uh, uh, attended uh, Prof lectures uh, just now. I really hope that uh, so far, Prof, just to update you, yeah, because of your lecture, kan? I've diagnosed two PNES so far. <laughs> Stop the anti-epileptic. <laughs> wow. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. So, so in a way, I think it is very important uh, for us to know certain typical lah. Saya rasa atypical, I will leave it to the epileptologist or to the neurologist. Tapi, um, yeah, the typical ones too, actually, um, memang uh, there are few, managed to stop few of my MOs from giving diazepam, phenytoin, you know, these are all the drugs that will come with side effects if we do not give it appropriately. So, uh, is there any questions? Um, kejap, kejap, kejap. I can see my good friend Rafi E here. <laughs> okay, okay, that's nice. Thank you for joining. The pathologist, kenapa dia bertang sini, ya? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think everyone wants to uh, uh, take the opportunity. Okay, Prof. Uh, pathologist pun kena belajar all these clinical, Prof. Ah, <laughs> pelik ah. Tapi okay, thank you for attending. Uh, terima kasih banyak, Prof. Excellent lecture. We really enjoy your lecture. Contoh, contoh, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Okay. I question. Hmm. Okay. Um, ada soalan tak? Ada orang yang malu-malu ke? Nak, boleh type dekat dalam chat box tu kat. Okay, uh, Prof, I just want to ask because you as the uh, neurologist, you have all the um, uh, luxury of having a neuro lab with you. You can tape the patient, you can admit the patient. So how about us that when the patient comes in with query, loss of consciousness, we are not sure seizure or not, no witness, that will be the challenging part. So how will you advise us in approaching this type of patients? Okay, so the, the first thing eh, is you, you, you must get the history from the witness again. I had, I have, uh, you know, some doctors when uh, the patient comes again, I had one myself also. Uh, so I took a history. Uh, adik, kenapa adik datang sini? Oh, saya pengsan dua kali dah, doktor. Datang dengan siapa ni? Seorang. Uh, uh, adik boleh balik, I said. They won't get upset, you know. Bukan dia kata, saya dah tunggu satu jam, doktor kata boleh balik. Uh, I, first, I rationalize. I ada ingat tak apa yang berlaku? Tak ingat. Siapa ingat? Oh, mak. Saya boleh cerita apa mak cakap kat saya? Ah, tak boleh. Saya nak dengar daripada mulut mak sendiri. Uh, so, we we must get the history from the uh, witness. Yeah? Must, must. Even though it's a phone call. Masa tu, mother dia tak available. You can talk on the phone. Kadang ada WhatsApp video call pun. Kan kita buat virtual clinic masa COVID ni. So we can do that. So we, that's okay. But you must talk to the witness. Do not rely on a third party in history which comes through, you know, from the original. It comes in. You know kan, cerita tangkap ikan besar ni. Lepas tu bila sampai ke you, dah, ikan jadi besar ni dah. So it is not good. Yeah? So that's number one. Yeah? Uh, as I, I mentioned, I, don't, I didn't mention this in this lecture, but epilepsy or epileptic seizures is not diagnosed by EEG. And there's no serum epilepsy level, guys. We cannot do that. Epilepsy is also diagnosed just like seizures clinically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you go by the definition, you won't be wrong. Yeah. So I've given you that the word stereotype, intermittent, yeah, and this disturbance of that kind of behavior. Not sure, then you get a neurologist or better still, an epileptologist epileptologist to see. I have 26 members in my epilepsy council. 
not all the epileptologists, some are interested, you know, but uh, maybe about a dozen are trained in epilepsy. Yeah? So there's always uh, the whole country ada. Uh, Sarawak, is, Sarawak ada, I think. Sabah tak ada. Huh? Contohnya lah, but you can, we have, uh, we can uh, be uh, your resource center lah for, for that. Yeah? Mm. Um, yeah, kalau tak sure, tanya Nasrina, Nasrina will get to me somehow. <laughs> form a group a whatsapp group amongst all of us ni i know and then we start a bigger group uh, at the moment we have a national neuro group tapi neurologist saja tak guna mm-hmm. semua epilepsy <laughs> kalau boleh you know you want some people yang key people in different states kan to to be uh, uh, to know how to get me lah or to get uh, my members yeah mm. Mm, okay yeah okay. It's, i i think it's kind of um, a challenging for you to have if you work in a center like for example putrajaya pun we don't have in house neurologist so sometimes kita pun rasa macam uh, in terms of the history tu lagi-lagi kalau ada good samaritan ni yang give a call but then we do not know who to call back kalau macam ya ada family it occurs at home then it's easier but uh, dia good samaritan dia nampak orang tu terbaring dia pun bagi call tak sure everything we do not know so basically we are working something in the dark So yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, since you mentioned that some of you don't have the facilities kan. Uh, I can tell you that patient yang 20 year old student tu yang macam gila tu. Yeah. Movement, her EEG has never been abnormal, always normal. Oh. And this is not based on the EEG at all. I see. Uh, the video yes. Okay. What you can do, uh, tell the the witness to record it on the handphone now this video will do video then show me but actually you can i get a lot of videos sent to me by a lot of people all over malaysia asking me what it is memang it's common so you all can do that okay video, yeah it's a good one because i can tell whether it's yang yang sudo sija tu kan yang gelen kepala banyak betul dia orang hantar kat ai nampak tak sudo sija ya so yeah boleh hantar ni uh, handphone recordings of the attack and now zaman covid kan when you do video call they will show you lah uh, or they will post you the video first then you will communicate by video call um, you know uh, can do that yeah mm-hmm. okay all right okay. So, um i just wanted to ask you i got a one patient uh, recently lah uh, she's uh, 60 plus she has been very well but uh, the family members were able to uh, describe the history of the patient which sounded like seizure but she doesn't have any focal neurological deficit CT brain done was normal, bloods was normal. So, um, what would be the next step for this type of patients? Eh? Macam, um, would EEG, because you mentioned uh, epilepsy, so-called is a clinical diagnosis. So, um, okay. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. How many attacks? Yeah. First, first attack. First attack at the age of 60. Okay, yes, correct. So, e, uh, firstly, a scan is actually at that age, a scan is more important than EEG. Mm-hmm. You do a scan, a CT scan will do. Uh, and it was normal, right? is that right? Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, wajib buat scan kalau umur below 1 or more than 18. Yeah? Okay, ingat, yeah? between 1 and 18, it's not wajib. Sunat je. Bukan sunat, maybe harus. Because most likely, it is a genetic cause. Mm. Below 1, structural. Above 18, structural, usually. Okay. okay. So we do imaging, wajib. Between 1 and 18, jadi wajib kalau the seizures are focal. Macam mm. bodoh tak buat uh, scan kan. Jerking one side je. Mesti ada lesion the opposite side. Mm-hmm. Contoh, ataupun lepas seizure you examine ada neurological deficit one side. Ha, itu kena buat juga. Okay. Ataupun uh, dia EEG ada focal feature. So the tiga situation lah. Dia seizure generalized. Tapi EEG shows focal lesions, uh, focal features. Uh, neurological examination shows focal signs after the seizure. And the third one is during the seizure ada focal sign. Ha, ni kena buat lah in any age group. Okay. okay so that's the first step. EG actually to me, our consensus guidelines, EG wajib buat untuk semua patient epilepsy. Tapi bukan untuk diagnosis. Untuk classification. Mm. I can tell you one thing. If the background of this pakcik ni, 60 tahun, still younger than me, but this <laughs> adik ni, adik ni yang 60 tahun ni, uh, kalau uh, the EG background kan, walaupun we don't capture the spikes, EG background abnormal, prognosis poor. I can tell you that. Oh. We will learn that epileptologists, the, okay, I tell you the, the number one uh, prognostic factor for prognosis, yeah, I mean for future, whether it recur or not, is IQ. Okay. IQ rendah, jangan harap nak cure, the, I mean to get remission. Mm. Number two, EEG background, the background, tak payah tunggu the spike. EEG background abnormal, poor prognosis. 
Hmm. So setiap kali we do EG. Bukannya untuk, ah kalau normal abang ni bukan epilepsi, pakcik. Bukan, tak boleh. I see. Uh, so for, for your patient, you, you haven't started any drugs, right? No, 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 no. Boleh, tak apa. Because it, it's, you know, the chances, the chances of getting second attack after one is 30%. Mm -mm. Chances of getting a third attack after two is 70%. That's why after two, regardless of any unknown cause, you just start treatment. Okay. So 70% and yeah, after one seizure, second attack, 30%. After two seizures, the attack, the risk of third attack is 70%. That's why we treat after uh, two attacks regardless. Okay. okay. So for you, you can wait. You can just uh, sit tight, reassure him. Kata the chances are small. But kalau katakan, I got another lecture on that lah. Last time, maybe next time. Uh, yeah. How to first seizure. But uh, katakan, eh, Pak Cik tu katakan, uh, doktor, doktor boleh tak sumpah? Yang saya tak kena second one, doktor. Doktor kata 30%. Tapi esok saya boleh kena tak? Boleh. So macam tu, kalau macam tu doktor, doktor saya nak makan ubat. And then you have to discuss with him. Okay. Ubat saya nak bagi ni, inilah kesan sampingan dia. <laughs> ah, ah, ini, ah, kalau nak juga, we, I will give actually. Because it's a, a contract between you and the patient. You discuss. Yeah. Ah, you, you don't make it independently. A patient autonomy kan? Yeah. So, we, All right. Thank okay. you, thank you, Prof. Uh, just one last one from me. How do you differentiate thought paralysis from the actual paralysis that due to the some structural brain uh, uh, insult uh, that is causing patient to have seizure? Okay, typically the thought paralysis, paralysis will last about 30 minutes, one hour. Though. Typically, we have seen the three days, three days. So, okay. memang susah. Kalau three days, you treat like a stroke, tak apa. To buat the stroke protocol, tak apa. Ah, okay. Uh, As I said, we have given thrombolysis to pseudo seizure pun pernah. Eh, pseudo, uh, thrombolysis to pseudo stroke. Yeah, pseudo stroke. Mm. Tapi that patient tu doktor tau. Dia pandai pura-pura. So, okay. uh, no risk factor to be treated him. Not me lah. One, I won't tell you who it is. Uh, but it's okay. It's okay. Because uh, as long kan dia kena sign kan for thrombolysis, dia kena consent. Mm -hmm. So, uh, tu tak apa. Tapi macam thought spiritual memang, I agree with you. If you don't know, patient comes. But there are telltale signs kan. Katakan, <coughs> Dia tergigit lidah. Tuan perisis, kata leh hand perisis tergigit lidah, terkencing. Most likely seizure lah. Because okay. unlikely a stroke patient will do that. Yeah? To to gigit lidah. Mm -hmm. uh, to the telltale signs. Or you can get an EEG immediately tau. Kalau emergency kan, get, call up Prof Raymond kata buat EEG sekarang boleh tak Prof? Uh, <laughs> ya. Then kita buat, after a seizure kan, the pick up for spikes is higher tau. Okay. Dah kena seizure, paralysis sekarang ni, one side, Buat EG, the yield is almost 100%. Mm. Tapi as you said lah, you all mana ada facilities. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. you, know, you just do the stroke protocols, okay. You can go okay. ahead with the contactual lah. Huh. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, I think because uh, from the neurology side pun, they will say that because the most of the patient yang datang dengan seizure, they, uh, seizure pula, apa, stroke biasanya dia negative symptom kan? Macam weakness and so forth, yeah. jarang datang dengan seizure. But it's, yeah, we do, yeah, there is also some population that comes in with that kind of positive symptoms. True, true. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, uh, any question? I think Prof. Raymond has to go around 10.30. Um, betul, Prof. Eh? Yeah. Tak, tak, tapi boleh tanya. Tapi ramai tak ada question. Okay. Okay. Ada ada soalan tak? Please ask and take this opportunity um, to ask Prof. Raymond because uh, I think... Uh, apa tu bukan senang ni nak panggil betul-betul prof are you planning to do any epilepsy related courses like we had last two years ke ada ke ah uh, there is well the second malaysian epilepsy congress is coming up tapi that will be 2023 lah because we just had one 2021 kan Ayah. so let's look up for the for the apa uh, announcement okay. uh, from our epilepsy council there will be one coming up there yeah. okay. yeah, hello right. assalamualaikum bro salam ya tu saya Dr. Khaled, FMS dari Jerantut. Ah, Waalaikumsalam. <laughs> Dari UKM, batch 91. Ah, muda, muda, muda lagi. <laughs> ah, ada satu patient, uh, Epson Caesar, dia dalam 60-an umur. Dia dapat tu masa umur, masa dia kerja lagi lah dengan Mindef. So sekarang ni on treatment, on uh, epilim, lepas tu pun kontrol, saya tambah dia, dia dengan gambar pentin lah. Gambar pentin. So dia punya simptom tu nampak improving lah. Hmm. Less frequent. Kalau dulu dia selalu jatuh-jatuh. Dapat head injury dalam 
kadang 30 minit lama juga tapi dia tak tak sedar lah masa tu i witness dia punya family okey so ada ada offer lain-lain ubat ke kalau dia masih lagi uncontrol okay. dengan dua ubat lah epilim and gabapentin hmm uh, dia dah ber, i mean uh, adult berumur sikit yeah, kan ya adult dia dah enam puluhan dah umur and scan normal eh scan dah buat kan scan dah buat normal Okay, so then, EEG dia show dia kata Epson Caesar lah. Epson Caesar punya. Apa cakap tu? EEG report you mean? Ni dia dia punya clinical diagnosis. Epson uh, is very uncommon at the age actually. Very uncommon. Uh, betul ke Epson? <laughs> dia, dia dapat tu dah ada dah, dah banyak tahun. Masa dia kerja dengan Mindef lagi. Okey tapi bukan kanak-kanak kan. Kan Epson selalu start umur 5 6 7. Ha. Uh. Ha, dia 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 masa dia rem, uh, bukan remaja dah umur dah bekerja and then dia punya history pun ada dapat pun memang Epson lah dia dia daripada berdiri dia tiba-tiba jatuh ha, no bukan, bukan Epson i mentioned oh. Epson do not fall they do not fall ah ha, cannot <laughs> kalau berdiri jatuh could be tonic or atonic seizures usually yeah Uh, I must tell you that epilim is okay that's fine sebab dia lelaki you all know women you cannot use epilim kan until they menopause but uh, epilim is fine cuma kan gabapentin is a very weak anti convulsant in fact we don't use anymore neurologists tak guna dah gabapentin untuk epilepsy we guna untuk pain saja uh, yeah. it's designed for seizures but it's not, it's not good kalau kalau tonic is a general seizure then the drug of choice epilim is fine right But, yeah. but you can give something like uh, the newer ones if you have um, katakan lamotrigine ada lamotrigine ada 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 lamotrigine must start slow and go slow yeah 25 mg every night then 25 bd 50 bd ataupun yeah. topiramate topiramate pun boleh uh, Top. topiramate topamax Top. lah. oh, okay this another one Uh, tapi gabapentin not good lah. Tapi kalau dia responding, biarlah dulu kan. Ah, dia responding. Dia dah nampak less frequent. Ya. Yeah. Sejak. Ya. Yeah. Okay, boleh. Okay. okay, okay. Okay, thank you, bro. Okay, thank you for the question. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Khaled, for your question. Really appreciate it. Uh, anyone else from the floor that would like to ask to Prof. Raymond? Uh, you may unmute yourself and ask him. Macam tak ada ke? Uh, 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 saya sebenarnya nak tanya, just now ada focal cortical dysplasia tu, what would be the cause ya? Yeah? Uh, it's congenital. It's congenital. Oh, okay. That, fun, eh? That lesion is the topic of my thesis for my doctorate now. Okay. So, I can give a talk also about what we call <laughs> uh, uh, malformations of cerebral develop, cortical development. That's my thesis. Okay. So, I, I, I had to learn embryology all over again. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> Anatomy and histology now. Mm. So I I I've given talks on this on um epilepsy in patients with cerebral cortical malformations. Mm. So this uh, topic for me and one of the papers I wrote in brain and brain they much under 500 citations actually because oh. it, it's not Seldom people do on this though, because only not rare. Tapi when we do MRI, we find a lot more now. CT scan tak nampak. We cannot do MRI. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. All right. Kalau tak ada apa kita ambil gambar-gambar ramai boleh tak? Boleh, Cuma boleh, un, boleh. Un, uh, yes. Uh, video yes. on. Pakai yes. tudung. Uh, sikat rambut sikit si apa ni Rafi. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. We we should do. I nak tunjuk oh, okay. um saya tunjuk my wife Rafi'i punya gambar dia kawan my wife tu colleague kerja tempat kerja sama I see um prof sorry ada satu soalan a uh, dia tanya ada. Tu, uh, ada ada baru masuk a uh, tolong tanya what is recommendation for uh, epilepsy patient with breakthrough seizure that we found low TDM is it safe to discharge after adjust the medication dose without waiting the TDM level to be back to the therapeutic level Good question. Hmm. TD therapeutic uh, monitoring eh, of drugs ni, we we don't do it routinely tau. Even neurologist, epilepsiologist pun tak buat. It's pretty useless. We go by clinical. You know? uh, I can tell you, eh, tegritol jangan buat. Tegritol because 
the metabolite, we call it carbon metabolite epoxide, it's also an active component which cannot be measured. Doctors increase the dose, become toxic pula. Sebab they cannot measure the epoxide. Valproate, lagi tu. Valproate, the levels are erratic tau. Hari ni lain, esok lain. So we don't do. Yang kena buat, wajib buat, from time to time is phenytoin. Phenytoin has uh, zero order kinetics, itu yang kena buat tu. Okay, so it's uh, difficult to uh, judge. So that one you can adjust the dose according to the level. But usually we go clinically. Yeah, and don't need to admit, tak payah admit. Seizures kan, if a patient uh, has a seizure and uh, the dose was katakan not enough, we just increase. We only admit kalau status, number one status epilepticus more than five minutes ataupun ada significant injury, short seizure, tapi patah tulang, masuk lah, what? Kan? <laughs> uh, uh, or, or side effect from the drug like Stephen Johnson syndrome, uh, kena masuk, what lah. Yeah? So the answer to the question uh, is, uh, we don't have to do TDM, and boleh discharge, no, no problem. Dan kalau tidak, buat, buat semua penuh dengan patient yang ada breakthrough seizures ni. Uh, you know, and then they get <laughs> COVID pula. <laughs> hmm. Ada ada recommended hours for monitoring tak Prof? Kalau dia orang datang dengan breakthrough seizure ni. Tak, tak, tak apa. Macam phenytoin, because we only do phenytoin. So phenytoin given at night kan? Mm. So we, we, what we do, we do trough, trough levels kan yang paling rendah tu. So you, by the time they come to clinic, katakan appointment pukul 8, 9 pagi, dia nak ambil darah dah pukul 12. Itu cantik lah. Uh, the half-life of phenytoin is very long kan? Uh, up to 36 hours. So you do at 12 noon, dia ambil malam semalam kan? Uh, cantik lah tu. Mm. Uh, dia ambil lah. <laughs> hmm. So tak adalah macam nak kata wajib kena tunggu TDM ke ataupun uh, kalau datang tu kena 6 jam ke 10 jam ke monitor tak adalah ya. As long as you think that the patient has good support, able to take care of themselves and so forth, should be okay kan Prof? And arrange for a TCA lah perhaps. Yeah, that's right. We go by seizure control clinically. Okay. Suspect toxic then we do the levels. Or tau the, the, the levels kita buat bila tau? Mata kita suspect dia non-compliant. Okay. Prof yang makan, saya prof makan. Tapi tengok level zero, ha, itu non compliant lah. Okay. Ha, the one you do, that one kita buat. Yeah, not not for efficacy tu. No. Okay. Hmm. Tapi kalau memang dia cakap memang memang tak tahu dia termis medication, I think that one quite clear cut lah juga kan? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Alright. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Any any more question for Prof Raymond? Dia malu malu ni nak yeah, tanya. Ah uh -huh. Ada sesiapa lagi tak nak tanya soalan pada Prof Raymond? Okay, kalau tak ada, kita mohon untuk for everyone to switch on their video uh, so that we can have a group photo. Uh, boleh boleh ke semua macam switch on uh, your your video? Rafiqi kat mana ni? Kat pejabat je? Yeah, I'm working today. Pathologist <laughs> uh, di Putrajaya, Pro. Oh. Uh, neuropathology macam-macam lah nanti kita akan tengok uh, brain banyak post mortem juga prof alright okay good good doing good work there saya tengah buat kereta grab ni oh you buat grab <laughs> atau anak-anak you kat belakang tu jok jok je lah prof <laughs> okay 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 <laughs> kita <laughs> switch on lah video ah. alright hey, siapa lagi Yuzlina Brandon, <laughs> Hari, ada nama iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Semua malu-malu ni. Alright. Um, okay, siapa lagi? Faris, Aina, Shprivon, Yusri, Kyo. Faris lah. Okay, saya ambil lah ya Prof ya. Eh? Ambil je. Okay. Ha. Alright. Okay, smile everyone. One, two, three. Hey. Okay, lagi sekali. Thank you. Okay, saya ambil muka surat kedua pula. Okay, everyone. Smile. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. Oh. Alright, great. Okay, thank you very much, Prof. Okay, welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. Excellent lecture. Okay.